What's up everybody? So today what you're going to be learning is how to do reporting in Airtable. This is all based on dates, but this is applicable to many different types of reporting. So if you're interested in that, stick around. But if you haven't met me before, my name is Ben Green. I'm the owner of Optimize IS. And what we do is we help business owners probably just like you, help you set up the systems like Airtable, Asana, Slack in your business. So if you're interested in any services, you can check out the link down in the description and request a consultation from me or someone on my team. But without further ado, we'll get right in the video now. So tossing on the glasses here, I'm going to show you a few different ways of reporting based on dates, as well as one other way of reporting uh, other than dates. So in here, what, basically the two reporting metrics that we're going to be talking about are the opportunities by month and the revenue by month. So this revenue table, this is just a simple sales CRM. And in here we have opportunities in one table, revenue in another. Now this would be linked to an opportunity, but I just created this table to show you guys the reporting. So what I would do in here is all you need for the dates, obviously you need a date in here. So within a date, there's a few different things you can do. So there's the month, there's the day, and there's the year. And that should be true across all the dates in any of these tables. So for this one, we'll use like uh, expected close date. And I might actually change one of these because this is just stock data to uh, like receive date. I don't know if I spelled that right, but receive date will be that one. I think it's, yeah. But basically that's all we need is this receive date uh, to know like when we got that opportunity so that we can allocate it to the right month. Now what you're gonna do is once you have those two dates, you're gonna insert a field to the right of each of those. And I'm gonna do this in both of these tables. I'm gonna use a formula. So this is gonna be the month ID. So here what you wanna do is you want to put a formula in here. Now I already created this formula because I use it in some other bases. But if you wanna pause the video, use this formula. Uh, I'll show you what it gives you and then I'll show you how it, how it works. So this one is based off of a pay date. So this should be your field goes there and then your field goes there. So receive date, receive date, create that field. And this is what that creates. So it says this one was May 2020. So that's the date it's going to use. Now, how does this formula work? So this is a concatenate formula that pulls together three text strings. So the first one is formatting that date as the month and the then there's a text string that's this uh, this little quote, space quote, to give us the space in there. Then there's another date time format formula to detect the year of that. So that's what we're gonna do in here, right there. You can click save. You can again, just pause this and use that formula. So now we're gonna do the same thing in the revenue table. So right in here, right by the pay date, we're gonna insert a field to the right here, and this will be a formula. Again, formula, and we'll use, I think pay date should be right on there. Um, and this will be month ID. And so now what you wanna do is in either of these tables, you can start off, you could start off just with a brand new table, but I'm just gonna come in here and insert another field to the right here, link to another record, and create a new table. Now this is gonna be a reporting table. So this will automatically update, and I'll show you that in a little bit but basically this will be months. So uh, the name for this should be months and we will not allow linking to multiple records. So we'll do that, link that up just like that. So now what you're gonna do is make sure all the way up here at the top, the first row, and you're gonna press on this first cell right here. And then I'm on a Mac, I'm gonna hold command, hold, hold shift and then press the down arrow and then press command C to copy it. And then I'll scroll all the way back up and I'm going to paste that right there. So now we've linked all of our revenue up to the months and we can see that there should be quite a few records created in here. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the opportunities. So in here, instead of creating a new table, I'm just going to insert one to the right of the month ID table, month ID field, connect it to the months, just like that. Don't need any lookup fields and we're going to go do the same thing in here. So press on that first cell. Command shift down, command copy, command C, scroll all the way back up and then paste that in the months uh, linked record right there. So now you'll see we have these two in here. So there's some months that we didn't have any revenue apparently. 
uh, but I did just randomize these dates so that we could so that I could show you this. So now what you're gonna do, this is just, this is just one way of reporting. So this is months by year. Uh, you could do this a similar thing just based on months and have it like overlapping based on the years. But now we can do some some fun rollups and counts in here. So the first thing we might want to do is we might want to know how many opportunities did we receive that month. So in here we'll use count and we'll say this is number opportunities. And so all we have to do here is count the number of opportunities. So that's perfect. We can see the number of opportunities by month. And then right here we can do, actually maybe we'll clone this one. So maybe you want to see the number of closed opportunities. So we'll duplicate that field, change this to closed ops. So closed opportunities. And here you're going to add a filter on this count. So we're going to say where the status is closed one. So we'll try that out and see how many less. So quite a few less. So then we can get like our monthly conversion rate if we wanted to, to do some even more reporting with a formula, just basically dividing these up. Uh, but I'm not going to show you that one. That's a real simple formula. Uh, I'll show you how to calculate the amount of revenue that you've gained. So in here, we'll do a roll up. And what we're going to be looking at is the revenue linked record. And then if we scroll down over here, we're going to choose the value. So we want to be rolling up the value. And what we want to be doing in here is we want to sum. So if you type sum in right here, it'll sum up those values. So we can see like uh, if you wanted, this would be really great if you can put it in a graph. Now, another thing in here, people really don't like seeing all this information out of order. So usually what I try to do is I sometimes have to use multiple fields for this, but what I do is so you don't have to come in here and man, you could create a manual sort field where you like number them. But what I like to do is I like to just insert a, a roll up here to the right, use the one with the most amount of linked records. So the opportunities linked record, and you're going to choose that the date that you base it off of. So this one will be received date and we're going to just choose min. You could use min or max. Uh, whichever one's your preference. And now we'll sort this whichever way you would like. So if you want it in chronological or reverse chronological, you can see it either way. And then I usually just hide this, but this sorts it the right way, like you would want it. So that's the first step. So now we can see like, is our revenue increasing? Is our revenue decreasing? And for this example, that is this is all just fake information kind of. So another, so this is actually a really cool uh, reporting method that I'm about to show you that I came up with recently. I'm not going to claim that I invented it, but this is one that I really like seeing just to see what are your, what are your trends? Should you be worried? Should you not be worried? So this one is a very simple one, but it's very useful. So in here we'll do, yeah, we'll do opportunities and we'll do revenue again. So I'm going to insert another field to the right here and I'm going to say formula and I'm going to say day. So there's this formula called day and it basically just takes the day. So like this one will be 23, this one will be 29, this one will be 20, 18, 19, etc. So this one will be based on the received date and right there. So now we can see the day and then we'll come in here and insert another field to the right and we'll do a actually not a formula, a link to another record where we create a new table and this will be a day reporting table. So we'll change that to day right there, disable that. Um, we'll change that to day reporting. So now you're gonna do a similar thing like we've mentioned a few times in this video, copy those and then paste it right there. So now what we can do is we can hide those fields once we're done with this, but we'll do the same thing for the revenue. So I really like this because it shows your trends, like no matter which month it was, it shows your trends, like where should you be at in any given month? Like do you average like higher in the first week, the second week or third week or fourth week? So if we add this day formula right here, we'll base it on the pay date create that field and then 
again add that linked record field right here. So then we're going to base this on the day. No lookup fields and not to bore you but copy those again and paste them there. So now if we come to the day table, this is some really some really interesting metrics we can get here. So if we come down here to roll up and we choose the revenue, we can see the revenue by day based on the value. So we can see like which days we get the most revenue and we can sort these to be A to Z. So we can see like, is it the first week, the second week, the fourth week, et cetera, et cetera. Now you should, I have, I have other videos on how to do all the counts, the roll-ups and everything. I guess the, the other useful one that I'll show you since we already got it in here is counting the number of opportunities. That one's pretty straightforward. Now, if you want to get some like better metrics on this, what I would go do is just uh, simply hide this, hide this, and insert another field to the right here. So for this one, it'll be number, and this is just going to be week number. So the first seven cells will be week one the second and the reason for this is so that we can group by this number so that we can see like which week we're seeing and then we can see the trends like week over week kind of but like monthly so the only trick here is on months that have more than 28 days i haven't found a good way other than i, mean, I see we don't have a 31 in here but this one would be five. Usually there's like three that end up in this last one. So now if we group by this field, we can see in here, if we collapse all of these, you can see your metrics month over month or like week over week within the month. So this is randomized data. So it's all going to be pretty similar, but this is really useful. If you can come in here and see my week one, I usually trend my week one and two, I usually trend a lot higher than weeks three and four. So I can expect a lot more business to come in in weeks one and two than weeks three and four. Or I expect a lot more opportunities to come in in weeks one and two, and then a lot more revenue to come in in weeks three and four. So this is just a real nice reporting table that I've liked to see in here. Uh, I'll hide this, but you can add as many metrics as you want based on the tables that you're linking from using the count and using the roll up. Now to make this all automated, I'm going to show you this for one of them because you can basically just duplicate it for the other one. So if we can come up here to automations, I'm going to go and create a customer automation and this will be auto link. So basically I'll show you in the revenue table, mainly because it has less fields. Uh, so in the revenue table, for when basically the only thing that needs to happen is the pay date is not empty. So we can run that test, should run pretty fast, and we can click done. So the reason why you need the pay date is because once you have the date, then you can run these formulas and then you can have it automatically link up. So now we'll add an action in here and basically we just wanna update that same record. So in the revenue table still, use the record ID from step one. So in here, record from step one, insert this record ID right here, choose the fields. So in here we wanna update the months. We also wanna update the day. And what you want to put in here is the value of the primary field. So this field over here on the left is the primary field. It's the most important field. Uh, this is how you link records, etc. So you come in here and you use the formula from the step one. So for the month, we want to use the month ID. So it says January 2021. We can just click insert right there. And then for day two, we'll just pick the, like the day ID. But it should just say day. So this is day 19. So I'll run this and it'll update it. It's all, we filled out all of the different fields in there. But once you do that, you can just click on and then I would do the same thing for every table you wanna do the reporting in. And make sure you include both of these in here rather than creating two automations because you are limited to 25 automations in one Airtable base. It just really keeps your automation like limit under control. So those are the basics of using reporting in here. Now, some other reporting metrics you could do uh, other than dates, which in here we have, we did day and we did month year. Uh, you could also do month. You could also do just year. You could do a lot of things based on, based on that. You could do like the week number out of the year if you had 
a lot of historical data to see those trends. Another thing you could do is you could see like the value based on the stage. So, or based on like the status in here. Now that is an option to create that other table. For something like that, I find it sometimes easier to just group by the status. And then in here, you can just go collapse all of them. And then you can see like the, the estimated value of each of all of the opportunities in each status. If it's for something more robust like time, I really like to have these other tables over here. That way you can just pop in here, see what is that, uh, what is that value, and you can see it like in a lot easier to digest format. And you, the other benefit of doing this is you can pull in records from different tables because multiple tables have multiple different um, reporting metrics that you might want to go off of. So using more tables to display this information can really take your base to the next level and allow you to make a lot better decisions. So if you enjoyed this video and you enjoyed learning about that automation to have this reporting be automated, I encourage you to go cl click this link in the end screen right here. It's gonna take you through 12 different automations for your CRM. Again, we are in here in the sales CRM, so go check out that automation. Uh, if you wanna take your sales CRM to the next level, it's 12 amazing, amazing automation. So hope you go check that video out. And without further ado, I hope you have a great day and I will see you in the next one. So that link in the end screen right there, box in the middle of the screen. See you there.